Hello, folks. Uh, Sean Mize here for our coaching call today, and let's go ahead and get started. Just to kind of give you a brief overview about what what I'd like to do today, and we know these calls are they are live and they're unscripted, and uh, you know people have questions that lead down a path that allows me to really have something juicy to teach on that I think will help most people. You folks know I go down that path, but my kind of my outline for today is to uh, work with anybody that um, needs to have any kind of blueprint done. Um, you know, one of the things that I work with in my business, and I do this, I, I'm not religious about it where every month I do it or every two months, you know, I don't have like a mark on my calendar, but, you know, usually I know I'm, I'm getting to the point where I'm spending more time than I should be floating around wondering what I'm supposed to be doing, and it's not because I don't know what to do, but my purpose has gotten a little shaky. And so I sit down and I draw up a blueprint for the next 30 to 90 days. We kind of talked about it a little bit last week, but the idea here is that you say, there's something I want to accomplish, and I want to accomplish it in a certain period of time. Okay? So, for example, I want to create a coaching program, and I think I can do that in 45 days. Or I want to create a new product, I can do that in 30 days. Or I want to create an, excuse me, a new coaching program, and I believe I'd like to do that in 90 days. So then the next step is, well, what are all the steps that are involved in getting that one thing done? Okay, so you, you, you divide it up into steps. And then you say, okay, in order to do this in 30 days or 90 days, how much time can I allot myself for each step? And then once you've allotted that, then you can say, okay, for the next 10 days, I'm working on this step. Obviously, if you get done with a step early, you can move to the next one, or you can take a couple of days off. And, and by the way, folks, in the Internet marketing world, it's really, really easy because you're working at home to just work all your hours every week, okay? And the problem is that sometimes you're stuck in the middle of something and you work for four hours into the evening and you don't pay your spouse any attention and you don't want to talk to the children or the dog and, and you, you, you're tired when you go to bed. But then tomorrow you 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 got to go to work or you're going to work eight hours online. But you, it, it's so easy then, you know, maybe you do your eight hours and the next day you end up working two hours extra. It's really easy to work extra. But when you get ahead, it's okay to take a couple days off. And what happens is for me, I find when I take a couple days off, I come back fresh. And I'll tell you, Monday is my best day of the week. For most people, I think Monday's not their best day. Monday's the day to kind of get back in the groove. Tuesday, Wednesday, maybe Thursday are a lot of people's best days. My best day is Monday. Why? Because normally I shut my computer off Friday night, and I don't turn it back on until Monday morning. And that's just my time, okay? And what I find is that I even try to not think about the Internet. So if i got something I'm working on online, I try not even to think about it. If it comes into my mind, I say, okay, I don't really want to think about it. I just, okay? What happens is because you give your mind a complete rest, on, on, for me, on Monday morning, I, I, I'm just so much more productive, okay? And so what happens is it's really, really easy because you're really excited about something. You work extra, and you begin to get burnt out a little bit. If, you're, if every time you work extra from what you plan to, then unschedule yourself some time later in the week. It doesn't have to be Saturday, Sunday. Everybody's different. You know, some people work just fine seven days a week, but, you know, maybe you need a half day off or, you know, whatever the case is. You need to figure out what works for you. Um, but kind of going back to the blueprint, that's what you're going to do. You're going to say, okay, it takes 10 days to do the research, it takes 10 days to outline it, it takes 10 days to record it, it takes 10 days to get it all online. Okay, 40 days, I'll have a product up and running. If you contrast that to how most people try to get something done, they wake up and they say, okay, what do I need to do to get this done? And that's fine and dandy, except usually when that happens, you end up going, oh, I don't really know what to do next because you haven't blueprinted it out. So you spend the day on email or YouTube or whatever trying to figure out the next step, and at the end of the day, you haven't done anything. You've done a lot of research and you haven't got anything done. Anybody ever feel like that, folks? Just say yes. 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 We got one honest person on the call. I know a lot of you folks are muted out too. So um, here's the thing. I know it happens with me. I also know it happens with you folks. I know that everybody that's on this call, that kind of thing happens too. It just that's the way it goes. So that, that's the idea of the blueprint. Okay. Now where do I come in? Well, because I've done these so so often. A lot of times you spend five minutes with me and you put together a blueprint. And I a couple of you, you know, Kristen, a couple others. You know, we didn't get to your blueprint on last week's call, and we said, well, we'll do it via email. We ended up bouncing a few emails back and forth, but I don't know that 
but we ended up coming up with a clear blueprint for anybody. I think we got close, but we never had a clear one. So if you're on the call today, that's why I'm doing blueprints first because, you know, we ended up saving them for last, last time, and they got they got jilted, okay? And so I want to make sure we do that today. Before we get into those little, Gradine, let's talk about your niche. You live with me, Gradine? Yes, I am. Excellent. So, you know, you just kind of fill everybody in if it's okay. But, you know, you're wanting to, you know, go into health and wellness. And the, the thing that holds you back there is I'm just going to read from your email and then we'll we'll move from there if that's okay. Yes, you do want to work in health and fitness, but the idea of coming up with things to sell and or coaching has you discouraged. You'd like to go on the concept of helping people realize that current lifestyles are not healthy and the changes that could benefit them. But and here, here's the big issue with health and fitness that is not as an issue, much of an issue in other areas. We'll talk about that for a second. But I'm not a health professional, so I'm steering away from that. Currently, I'm just not knowing. Okay, and, and so the truth of the matter is that you know, you, you have a, we all have a level of responsibility to the people that we bring on, okay? And if, if you're in health and fitness and you're dealing with people's lives, and, you know, if you're not appropriately certified and you don't, you don't know the appropriate things to help people, you know, maybe you could hurt somebody. And, and, and so you, you really have to be careful jumping into that arena. You know, and, and what a lot of people do that want to go into health and fitness is they just resell other people's products. So other people are the ones that are actually doing the teaching. You know, you're just doing the, the communicating. And I'm not big on that model. I don't really teach it. I can help you if that's really what you want to do, okay? But, I mean, you know, most people, they join my coaching program because they want to get their own thing up and running. They want to do their own coaching, that kind of thing. Okay, and then there's other areas like legal and real estate and the psychology and, you know, if you're helping people with, with psychological issues or anything that is anywhere nearly related to that, you know, you, 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 there's a life and death kind of responsibility that, that's going on there. And, and if you're not fully qualified to teach, you, you shouldn't be teaching in that. You know, whether that means going back to school or it means doing the research to learn or getting a certification, and it's different in every niche. I mean, what, what needs to be done, Okay. Obviously, folks, if, if you're in, let's say, the Internet marketing or the marketing online niches, you also have a responsibility, folks, to know what you're talking about. I mean, there, there aren't many certifications. You know, I'll tell you, the government has done, you know, a, a job of, of trying to back down on people, you know, let's just call it scam artists that go out there and say, you know, I promise you, I'll make $100,000 next month if you just buy this program. And, and, and the, the FTC is really beginning to crack down. On, on people that are that are making unfounded claims, okay? and and I know that a lot of people gripe that maybe the FTC has gone too far. You know, they they don't want you putting anything on your website that cannot be documented. You know, and and we could argue about this all day long, and I'm sure there's people on both sides of it. So we we don't want to. It is what it is. The rules are the rules. Okay, you know, the, the truth of the matter is that when when anything that you're teaching, you shouldn't be teaching it unless you know it. You you shouldn't be pretending to teach it. And, and if you're pretending to teach it, maybe, maybe you've got to take 30 days off, stop building your business, and just spend 30 days learning. I mean, 30 days. Go out and buy 30 books from Amazon on your topic and read them all. Or, you know, go get a professional course on the topic and then learn it. You know, and maybe if you look at your niche and you say, well, you know what, the only way I could be fully qualified is to go get a, a, a 12-year doctorate. Okay, well, then that's probably not a good niche for you. And then, great thing, I know I've kind of, kind of gone off on a, on a rabbit trail here, but I wanted to use this as I do with lots of topics on these calls. I really wanted to use this as a teaching opportunity for people because, you know, the truth of the matter is, the bottom line is a lot of people try to, to, to get into things that they're just not qualified to, to, to get into. Okay, and so that's kind of where we left it. It sounds like you're in the place where you're really feeling like maybe you're not qualified, and, and I don't want to fight that. You know, if, if you really feel like you're not qualified, the flip side is if, if you're feeling like you're not qualified because you don't have a bunch of initials behind your name, but in fact there's some topic that you really know a lot about and you really can help people, then I would still encourage you to, to work on helping people you know, I, I think that you need to be upfront about the idea that, hey, I'm not a licensed practitioner in this topic, and basically what I'm sharing with you is my opinion. If it helps, great. If it doesn't, 
you know, that's okay too. And then make sure that you go to the FTC and just find out what kind of disclosures you're supposed to put on your site so you can protect yourself legally. But I'm more concerned, although you need to protect yourself legally, I am always more concerned with people being ethical, okay? If you are ethical, my guess is most of the time you're within the confines of the law. Okay, the law is written, and if we think about this, all law is written to give people guidance so that they don't have to think about whether or not you have to be ethical. But if, if, if in most cases, if you're truly ethical, you're within the confines of the law. I mean, think about it. You know, there's laws against stealing. Well, why do we have laws? Well, it's because some people don't, don't know that stealing is wrong, or some people know that stealing is wrong, but they do it anyway. But if everybody on earth actually acted ethical and moral, well, we wouldn't have to have laws against stealing. You know, and, and we could, I mean, we could do this with all kinds of things. We could say, we could say, why do we have laws that say that if you sign a contract and you're bound by that contract, you break the contract, there's, you know, penalties, you can take it to court or whatever. Well, laws are not there because we just want to have laws. The laws are there because somebody at some time in the past has violated a contract. Okay, and, and it's the same thing. I mean, why does the FTC have to come up with all these rules and regulations for what to put on your website? Well, it's because a lot of jokers out there have come out and put lies and things on their websites. Okay, so now we have to have rules and regulations. Okay, and, and so I am most concerned, folks, and, and please, I'm not saying go outside the law but be ethical. Like, please don't, don't anybody read that into what I'm saying, but I am most concerned, folks, with, with people teaching what they know. And if you don't know anything, you're going to have to go out there and learn. Again, this isn't applying to you so much, Gradine, as this is, I'm using this as a teaching moment. So let's move on to where you're at, okay? So maybe you, you had, you know, you, you talked about, I mean, the earlier email that you wrote, you know, that you had written me was you thought you had a niche, the health and wellness. You tried to come up with a method to monetize your coach. You're getting nowhere. You worked on 10 by 10 for a couple of days. Your result was come up with, you know, with one that creates a lifestyle change by working online. And when I was reading it that far, I was like really excited about that because, you know, the truth of the matter is most people that are unhealthy, most people that are unhealthy, I say most because some people that are unhealthy, they, you know, what's the opposite of luck? Fate? You know, whatever. You know, there's some chance occurred that you got some disease, okay, and it happened by chance. Let's face it. I mean, most diseases, okay, although I wouldn't go so far as to say that they are caused by bad eating and lifestyle, maybe only because I don't want to argue about it, maybe because I don't want the government telling me I don't have a right to say that, okay, but, you know, if we think about it, if you look at populations like people in Japan 40 years ago or people that live in indigenous Chinese societies or you look at people that are in indigenous societies that have not been affected by, you know, Western food and lots of sugar, you look at them and you go, oh, wow, they only have a tenth of the cancer that perhaps we have or they only have like a tenth of the diabetes that we have, okay? And, and if if things like diabetes and cancer and, and uh, obesity and stress, you know, induced um, strokes and heart attacks and things like that are just a freak of nature that they happen to 30% of the people, then why wouldn't they happen in these countries where, where people eat better, okay? And, and, again, this isn't a lesson on health, but, you know, the, the bottom line is I think most of us, if we dig deep enough, we realize that most disease probably comes from some area of our lifestyle isn't right, okay? And, and we can look at all kinds of things. You know, we can say, you know, I, I, again, I don't want to make this a lecture, but when, when I read that from you, Gradine, I said lifestyle change. I go, wow, you know, that, you know, that, that's, that's really cool that, that you work on helping people have a lifestyle change because if people have a lifestyle change, they eat a little better and they, they exercise a little better and they work on getting rid of stress and they work on their relationships, and they work on their money. They work on a broad range of things to fix their lifestyle. After five years, a lot of the problems that people have tend to begin to back off and, and go away. So I was really excited when I read that. And then, of course, I, you know, I, I, um, I asked you, do you want to still work in health and fitness? Then you said what you said. Yeah, I do, but the idea of coming things to sell, et cetera, is how you discouraged. My, my question to you then was tell me about your other interests, what you see yourself coaching in, because I want to move you in a direction. But now that you've had probably a couple hours to think about what I wrote you, now that I've been kind of blabbing here for the last 10 minutes about this, you know, I, I want to hear it from you. I mean, where do you feel like you stand? Do you feel like you could offer somebody in health and somebody something in health and fitness? If not, what are your other interests? 
Well, I do on the health and wellness to a point, but I found myself getting into what you were talking about. I don't, I'm not a doctor. I just, it, that's my passion is changing your lifestyle. Um, and that's about as far as I've gotten. I just took the last couple of hours exploring some other ideas. They're just not panning out. Okay, what do you mean by not panning out? Well, I guess I just really don't have any other interests that I feel like. Only interests. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. That I feel like I could take somewhere. Okay. So if your primary interest is is health and wellness and helping people, what if, you know, I'm a real big believer that people should, should work in their interest. I mean, even if somebody doesn't know enough yet, but they have an interest, I think they'd be better off taking 30 days or 60 days or, or two years maybe, I don't know, and and learning what they need to to be in their interest rather than stumbling and bumbling around trying to pretend they're interested in something else. I see it so often. People get into something they're totally not interested in online. Even if they start making some money, they're so totally uninterested in it, they end up dropping it in, in six months or a year. And it, you, you don't want that to happen. And, and so my thought here, let me just tell you my thought, and then you tell me what you think about this. My thought is assemble all the things that you can help people with without being licensed, okay, you know, without legally having to have, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, if you're going to prescribe a solution for diabetes, you know, you, you'd probably need to be licensed, okay? But if if you are going to prescribe people or not even prescribe but recommend a lifestyle change that has certain dietary elements in it, okay, that are generally accepted, I mean, that are generally accepted as the things that will lead to healthy lifestyle, you know, I believe that you could probably teach that, put somewhere on your website, say, hey, look, I'm, I'm not a licensed practitioner of this, you know, and, and obviously anything that I write on this website or anything you purchase from me, you know, you you know, you can double check it with your doctor. You should double check it with your doctor, with your naturopath, you know, with other material that you learn. But I think what you're going to find is that most everything that I have on this website is, well, let's call it common sense. Okay, and then any time that you make a statement, okay, you make a statement like, okay, you eat too much sugar, you get diabetes, make sure you can back that up on your website. Again, I'm not saying that that is or that's not an accurate statement, but, you know, if that was one of the things that you were going to teach, you know, make sure you back it up. I mean, you can, you know how when you read a book, you, you, the back of the book has 787 links in the back of the book to references, okay, and you can do that. You can have a references page on your website that would be really easy to maintain. You just have reference, and it, you know, it, 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 it what is whatever it is. And then when you write anything on your document, you, you create an, a book. Even if you sell an MP3 that has some information on it, at the bottom of that MP3 or on the download page after the MP3, you can say, here's a link to, you know, to look at the original research on whatever it is I taught on in this MP3, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, I, I think that you can structure it. I mean, my goodness, probably 90% of the people that are teaching health and fitness online are not licensed practitioners. In fact, if, if you go out and you look at, if you go to your local bookstore and you look at the hardcover books on, on diet and health and wellness, I'm not saying this is right or wrong, folks, but if, if, if you pick up the books and you look at 30 of them, my guess is you'll find that half of them are not written by doctors. Okay, a lot of them are, you, I think you'll find is a lot of them are written by someone who had a particular disease, went to the doctors, found the doctors couldn't fix them, did a lot of research, found that if they ate this, 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 and this, they got better. They started looking into it. They found a 100 other people that were able to eat this, 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 and this and get better from this. They got angry that the doctors weren't able to help them, and they wrote a book about it. Okay, now, you know, just because 100 people were recovered from a particular disease because they did this, this, and this, in no way are they saying that everybody else is going to achieve that. However, here's another viable option. And, and I think that if that you can position things in such a way that you can ethically help people and at the same time say, look, I'm not a licensed practitioner. I'm not a doctor. I've learned this from personal experience and lots of study. You know, if you want to get this from a doctor, Go to a doctor. 
if you want to research this on your own, this could be a starting place. How do you feel about positioning your business in that way, Gradine? Well, that sounds like a good idea. I, I don't see the monetizing, though, at the end of it. <clears throat> Okay, so let's talk about monetizing it. Okay, I mean because because I didn't want to talk about monetization until we had that you felt comfortable in a niche that you felt comfortable in and that you feel comfortable in the way to approach it, and then we talk about money. Okay, because I believe you could monetize health and fitness. So if if you feel like that, that this is the direction you want to go, then yeah, let's talk about monetizing it. So do you feel like this is the direction that you'd like to go, assuming you can monetize it? Yes, okay. I do. So let's talk about monetizing it, okay? Now, obviously, through the course of my program, you get you get dozens of hours anyway of all the different steps to monetizing it. And some of them, you know, unfortunately, are maybe a little more detailed than they need to be. And, you know, unfortunately, some people might look at something, they, they go, oh, it has too many details, and somebody else could listen to the exact same thing and go, boy, that doesn't have enough details. So a lot of it has to do with each person's individual background and so you know, when I say I've got dozens of, of, of hours of the material that teaches you all the steps for monetization, you know, maybe the usable information is 70% of that or something, okay? Because, I mean, even in this conversation with you, you know, there's pieces that we all don't need, and, and they're, they're there, okay? But it, it, so what I want to do is give you a quick overview of some ideas, and then it, once you make the decision to go with those ideas, then the instructions for doing those ideas are actually in the training program and in the lessons and all that. How does that sound? It sounds good. Okay, so here's what I want to do first is, is, is kind of give you an idea of what a typical health and wellness coach does, okay, a typical health and wellness coach, and then I'm going to give you an alternate idea, okay. So the first, the typical thing that most health and wellness coaches do, I hate to use the word most, but um, this is the typical thing that we generally see people do with some variations. I mean, instead of I'm going to give you three or four product ideas, some people might do ten, some people might just do one or two, and they might change the price points up and whatever. But the general idea here is the, the tried and true sales funnel. And what we generally see with this is that people will, what, what they'll do generally is they will um, they'll start out with something low ticket. Okay, that people can buy, and, and I want to be clear about low ticket. Low ticket, when I say low ticket, low ticket usually means about 37 bucks. Okay? Sometimes people think of low ticket as 97 Okay? And in some markets, 97 might be low ticket. I don't believe that in the health and fitness market, 97 is low ticket. But again, everything's relative. I mean, if you have a 50,000, you know, if, if, if you're one of, and you don't, obviously, but, if, you know, if, if, if you're the person that has a clinic out in California where somebody can come stay for a whole month and get, like, detoxed and, and rejuvenated and four massages a day and, and walk on dirt outside and, you know, do all kinds of things that maybe make you healthy for a month and it's a $50,000 program, well, you know, $1,000 might be low ticket, okay? But for the normal information funnel, I like to think of 37 as low ticket. Okay, that's what I use for low ticket. Okay, now, I want to contrast this just because it's so popular these days, and that's selling $7 or $1 or $10 items as low ticket. Okay, and I know that you've seen me do it, you've seen other people do it, and I'll tell you what I – and then there's a lot of other people you see do it. So there's three categories of people that do it. I do it from time to time. Other people do it that know what they're doing from time to time. And then other people do it because they're copying me and other people that, are, that they see doing it. And they just assume that because we might do it that it's extremely effective. Okay? Now, let me give you my opinion on it. Okay? And you're going to laugh as I give you my opinion on it, okay, because you see, well, you know, you keep going back to it. Well, you're right. I do, and a lot of other people do too. But we usually go back to it for a short period of time. We do a test. We realize it doesn't work. We quit doing it. The difference is people see me do it as a test for 30 days. You know, they see other people do it as a test for 30 days. They don't know it's a test for 30 days. And they go, well, Sean's doing it. It must work. And they're doing it two years later. It's not working. They're doing it two years later you know, 23 months after I quit doing it, okay, and, you know, six months later, you know, I do the same thing you folks do, I say, you know what, so many people are doing it, they keep doing it, must be working, I'll do a test, the difference is, I'm doing a test, 
you're growing, that's my business model. I mean, I'm not accusing you, Greg Dean. I'm just saying that to everybody, that's oftentimes what happens. You'll say, okay, that's my business model, okay? I've never been able to make it work, and every single person that I've ever seen do it before, when I look back at them six months later, they're not doing it anymore. Now, what does that tell you? Every single person that I know is making big money, okay? I see people doing it that aren't making money. They do it for two years, five years, come to me for coaching, quit doing it, start making money, okay? But I'm talking about the people that, are, that, you, that I know are making big money. They do it for a month or two, and they say, you know what? It, 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 it's, it's just not working for me. The numbers don't work. It's extremely, um, it's extremely tempting to do, folks. And I don't want to spend a lot of time on this because I want this to be targeted around health and fitness. But, you know, this really applies to every niche. It's really tar- tempting to do because especially if you're buying traffic. And obviously, if you're buying traffic and you can make a $7 book break even on your traffic source, well, hey, you're breaking even on your traffic source. You know, that's better than most people do up front. Most people don't break even their first day, and, and so they're going in the hole for traffic. Hey, if you're breaking even, you're doing half a million dollars in, you know, let's say Google pay-per-click, and you're paying for it with your $7 product, guess what? That's probably an effective strategy for you because you're doing pay-per-click. You're paying money out, and if you found a way to be able to break even on that money. What happens is, though, that most people – are not able to break even on the upside, on the front end. So they're still having to do the whole funnel on the back end. The problem is the vast majority of people who buy at $7 will never upgrade. If they do upgrade, their first upgrade is 37 and maybe it takes them 30 to 90 days before they make that purchase. And then even then, only 10 or 20% of those people are going to go to the next level. And so my opinion on using this cheap, 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 cheap stuff Sure, it makes it feel like you've got money coming in, but you have it going out just as fast because you're buying traffic, okay? And what happens is it really prolongs your sales cycle. So, you know, in, in my sales cycle, you know, I'm selling coaching to people within 10 days of the time they come on my list, okay? Well, if I have, if, you know, if I go out and get 1,000 subscribers, okay, let's say I get 1,000 subscribers, just for a thousand dollars, say it cost me a thousand dollars to get a thousand subscribers, okay? And just one person puts a thousand dollars down on working with me. Just one out of a thousand. I've broken even within ten days on my traffic. Okay, now if you have a thousand subscribers at seven dollars, you have to sell a hundred and I believe it's a hundred and 40, 140, maybe 144 people, 14.4% of those people have to buy that $7 item, okay, before you even break even, okay, which, congratulations if you can break even on that, most people cannot, most people cannot get 144 sales out of 1,000 subscribers within the first 10 days, okay, now it's really tempting to look at a whole year and say, oh, over a year I break even, if you're in business to break even in a year, I mean, wow, it's going to really take you a long time, okay? I believe people should break even on their front end within 10 days, within 15 days. Okay, now, if you're using a $37 upfront product, that makes it a lot easier because if you have 1,000 subscribers, and let's say it costs you $1,000 to get them, you only need like 32 people to buy a 37 bucks to be able to break even. That, In my opinion, that's a lot easier to do. And obviously, it depends on your copy. I mean, if you have a horrible $37 sales letter, but a really good $7 one, well, then the $7 one's going to convert better. But I would, I would say to anybody that's doing that, if your $7 sales letter is converting so well, change the price to $37, it'll probably still convert well. Okay? Now, so having said that, we've kind of a long diatribe that I maybe shouldn't have gotten into, but hopefully it was useful information on why I like $37 as an entry point rather than 7 okay? $37. And then once they purchase that $37, there's two options. One option is to then upsell them to $97 or $197 um, home study course, okay? And I'll explain what those could be in just a moment, Greg Ian. And then once people buy the, the, the $197 or the $97 home study course, some of those people will want more help from you and you'll offer them coaching, Okay. That's one model. I'm going to give you two more, and then I'm going to tell you what those items could look like, because right now you're probably thinking, well, 
what am I going to write about? Or what am I going to make a home study course about? Or what am I going to do coaching about? Because, I mean, that's obviously what our conversation has been about. You're not sure how you'd monetize it. So I'm going to give that to you. But I want to try to be a little organized here. And before I give that to you, I want to say that was one model. So 37 to 197 to coaching. Okay? Another model that works really well, this works really, really well in the real world. Okay? That is 37 and then sell them coaching. Okay? Now, Another model that I have taught, I'm going to call it off and on for the last three, maybe even four years. And I'm going to explain, I'll tell you right now why I've taught it off and on, okay? First of all, I'll tell you what the model is. The model is selling coaching first and just skipping 37 and skipping 97 and just selling coaching first. Okay, that model works for me and that model works for some clients, I've seen that model work for some people, okay? And you say, well, why don't you just teach it? Well, the problem is it doesn't always work. Well, it never works for all people, okay? Now, we know that nothing works for all people. Okay? I mean, if I suggested that for you to get in shape, all you have to do is go do 200 push-ups a day, that would not work for most people. Why? Because most people wouldn't do 200 push-ups. I mean, that's the bottom line. You know, and they may say, well, I can't do them. I can only do three. Okay, we'll do three. Take a break for 15 minutes. Come back and do three. Do that 24 hours, and after, you know, a few weeks, you'll be able to do 10 at a time. Then you do 20 sets of 10. What would happen? Most people won't do it. And because they won't do it, because they can't do it, it won't happen. And so what happens is when I'm on the on period, okay, when I say, you know, I, I really believe that you can best monetize by just selling coaching first, most people – miss a step. I'm going to give you the steps in a moment. But most people skip a step, it doesn't work, and they're not happy. What works consistently for all people that do it is they're creating a $37 product, then selling coaching. And, and, and so that's where I go with the off and on, okay? And so what happens is what people really probably need to do is really be pushing for coaching, but what most people will do is create a product first. And so what I found is that if I help people create a product the first month and then get them to sell coaching, because they have something solid to hold on to and to sell, they become more effective at selling coaching, okay? And, and so because of that, I don't push that model that much, but because I want to be totally transparent here, because I want this teaching to be complete, I, I want to be really clear that there's multiple ways you can do it. One way is 37 to 197 to coaching. Another way is 37 to coaching. And if you're a bold person, then just go straight to coaching. Okay. Now, having said that, let me let, let me give let me give what these three items might contain. Okay. And I'm going to try to make it as easy as possible for you to be able to wrap your mind around creating them. Okay. The thirty-seven dollar item can be either a fifty or so page ebook or manual. Okay or a one- to three-hour recording. Okay, now, I, I want to be real careful here because, you know, maybe somebody's ever heard me say before, well, a $37 item, item could be 30 pages, or maybe I've said before a, 30, a $37 item could be 100 pages. Well, you're right. It could be 30, it could be 50, it could be 100, it could be 400, it could be 7 if it was really loaded with great information. Okay, the number of pages is not important. What's important is that if on the sales page you promise to teach X, Y, and Z, that you teach X, Y, and Z. That's all that's important. Because, see, people are not paying for 50 pages. They are paying for the answer to X, Y, and Z. Okay, now, you will have some people that if your book is only seven pages, even if you teach X, Y, and Z, they are going to think that they were jilted, because it was only seven pages. And so because of that, most people put a bunch of filler in their book to make it 50 pages so that, that, that they solve the problem of those complainers, okay? In reality, you should load your book with all the information that's necessary, no filler, and sell it as it comes out. If it's 50 pages, if it's 30 pages, if 100 pages, whatever the case is, okay? Now, the, the, the other... You know, we said ebook. The other option would be a recording. Okay, now, some people tell me it's really hard for me to record, and so I say to those people, just write a book. 
Some people tell me it they take me a year to write a book, so I said, okay, record an audio because it will take you three hours. I want everybody to understand that you don't need to be locked into doing one or the other. If it's really easy for you to just look at an outline and speak your thoughts, just like I am right now. I'm using no notes. Why? Because I didn't prepare them. Why? Because this is obviously for people in the future that are listening to this as a recorded training, okay, this is a training. For, for you, this is a live interactive call. You came here with a question. I'm giving it to you. And that's count I've been teaching for about 29 minutes. Okay, now, is it as organized as, as if I had read off of a sheet of paper? Oh, probably not. Okay, I wouldn't have had some of the rabbit trails that I took you down, which, by the way, may be the most valuable part of this training. Okay? If I worked from an outline, maybe it would have been a little bit more organized. Okay? So what I recommend for people to do is if you know the information inside of you, make an outline and just teach it. I know this information inside of me, and so I'm able to teach it. And if you say, well, I don't know the information inside of me. I have to do lots of research. Well, maybe you're better off writing. Why? Well, because writing, you can go, you can do a little bit of research, you can write down what you learned, you can go do a little more research, write down what you learned, and now you have an ebook. And then when you've written the ebook, you could probably make an outline of the ebook and then go do a three hour recording of everything you learned because now you know it. Does, does, that, does that make sense? Okay. So now moving on to, uh, before we go any further, can everybody hear me okay? Yes, I hear you. Okay, excellent. Excellent. And uh, folks, I know a lot of you on mute, and I appreciate that because it helps with the background noise. But um, sometimes I just, I, I always get to worry, and when I'm teaching something like this, that we've lost the line. Okay. So then the, the next step would be to say, okay, what are we going to do for our home study course? $197. Okay, with $197 home study course, you know, you could make it a three-hour training, okay? You could make it a six-hour training. You could make it a 10-hour training. You know, probably in the range of five to 10 hours will make most people feel like they've gotten a good value for their money. Uh, it kind of goes back to that old idea that, you know, people, people are really paying for, the, for a specific information, but they evaluate the information based on how long it is. Okay, I mean, I just tell you something crazy. I mean, you could give somebody 20 hours worth of um, gibberish, and a lot of times they'd be more happy with that than half an hour of targeted information. It, it's ridiculous to me that that is the case, you know. But unfortunately, that's what a lot of people do, you know. And you don't want to do that. You want to say, I have this information. If you use my 10 by 10 matrix, you, you write down all the information and that you're going to teach, and you just teach on one topic for each hour. Now, you may be thinking, well, I have 10 minutes worth of, top of information for each hour. I can't teach for an hour. Well, you have two choices. One, you can go learn more information. Okay? Because trust me, folks, when I started this business, I didn't know very much. People would ask me questions via email, and I was able to save face because it was email, and I would go hunt for the answer and then send them the answer. Okay, now you may think, well, that was a waste of time. You could have just told them to go hunt for it. Well, yeah, but then I wouldn't have learned anything. And every single time I had to hunt for an answer, I learned something. And then, of course, I implemented it in my business, and, and of course, now I just teach it from the bottom. And, and you know, if, if you're thinking health and wellness and, and you say, okay, well, I only have 10 minutes of information on food. I only have 10 minutes of information on supplements. Okay, well, you need to learn more. You know, you, you can go down to the library and probably buy, rent, or borrow, whether you do a library, you borrow, you probably borrow 10 videos that teach you all about nutrition and take really good notes, and uh, you could probably do a 10-hour recording after listening to 10 other people's videos. Okay, and I don't know where you're at, and I'm trying to make this completely complete for everybody. Okay, now, the next step is coaching. Okay, now, let's talk about coaching. Why do people buy coaching? People buy coaching... Because they want personalized help. They don't buy coaching because of the pure information. Okay? You could sell the exact same training. I don't recommend doing this, but you can. You could sell the exact same information, say a $500 or two, we're using the number 200, we'll use it, $200 home study course, Exact same information would be in the coaching program for $500, let's say. 
and half of the people would choose the $500 program. Why? Because they want the personalized aspect to coaching. Okay? That's why people buy coaching. Okay, so that brings us to, well, what do you put in the coaching program? The number one most important thing. In fact, before I give you the number one most important thing, let me say this. The number one most important thing I believe most people think they have to put in their coaching program is lots of content. They think in order to launch a coaching program, I have to have an hour of new content every single week. That's the first thing people think. And then what happens is they go, oh, I could never create an hour's worth of content every week, so I can't do a coaching program. Okay. The problem is that's not what your clients want. That's not what your clients want. What your clients want is the personal access to you so they can ask questions. I mean, think about this. We're recording this, but we're doing this live as a coaching program. Now, could you ever get the, the detail that's exactly specific to you in a training program that I'm giving you now? No. Now, obviously, you could say, well, if I listen to this recording, yeah, but if, if you and I hadn't had this conversation, you wouldn't be getting this exact information. And, of course, next week it'll be somebody else, and next week it'll be somebody else, and next week it'll be somebody else. And so every single time that we meet, it's personalized. That's what people pay for. Now, sure, in my coaching program, I throw a lot of training at you. I, I, I have to be careful not to send too much because if I send too much, you don't go through it all. You get discouraged because you're not going through it. And so there's always this tightrope because, I mean, I literally have hundreds of hours of information that I could send you. But it wouldn't do you any good. If you don't study one hour and then implement it, one hour and then implement it, it does you no good at all. So I, I have to personally walk that tightrope. If you're starting out, you don't have to walk that tightrope. Why? Because you may not have any trainings. It doesn't matter. You can sell coaching without any training to sell. You may go, oh, how can I do that? I'll tell you how I did it one time. I'll tell you how I did it one time. Okay, now, it was not in the health and wellness niche, but it doesn't matter. And I'm not going to tell you what niche it was because as soon as I do, oh, it's not the health and wellness. I'm going to tell you it's not health and wellness, but I don't want to box you in where you, where you think that, just because I did it in one niche, it's the only niche that can be done. I get that so often. People hear that I've done something in a particular niche, and they think it outrules theirs. One time, I got on the phone with a client, a prospective client at that time. It was, he was probably a client. He probably bought some things, but not coaching. He got on the phone with him and he told me what he wanted, and I said, I can help you with that. But I don't have a coaching program or a training. I don't have lessons I can send you. So we'll have to do it one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, and I said, look, I charge $1,000 an hour for my coaching, it's probably going to take us about 12 hours, okay, for me to teach you all of this, 12 hours, okay, we can do that once a week or once a month, however you want to, okay, and uh, he said, okay, I'd love to do that, okay, but I, I, I really, I can't invest $12,000, okay, now, where are we at right here? First of all, I want you to imagine that he had said yes, because I've had clients that say yes to $1,000 an hour. I've had clients that say yes to, you know, whatever it is, $5,000, $10,000 package. They say yes, okay, with perhaps no training involved. There's no training. It's just get on the phone with me, and I teach you. You don't need to have prepared training to do a coaching program. Okay, now, let me say that again. You do not need prepared training to do a coaching program. Okay, now, I'm going to show you right now how to do it. Okay, now, the next step, because I want to be totally transparent about what I did, the next step that I did with this client, but you don't need to do this, okay, is I said to him, I said, okay, well, I mean, if you can't afford that, you know, what can you afford? And, and I don't remember the number. I want to say he said, oh, I can afford four grand. And I said, okay. Let me ask you this. I'll do it for four grand if you will allow me to record all the lessons. If you will allow me to record everything we do together. And I can package it up so any future client that needs to learn this, I don't have to work with them one-on-one. -on -one. I can just send them the package. Now, for him, it was a win-win because he is going to get the exact same training for a third of the price. The exact same training. And it's win-win for me. Sure, 
I'm not going to take the extra eight grand in, but hey, he couldn't afford the 12 anyway. He, he, he couldn't afford it. He's not going to be able to pay it. I lose nothing. And in fact, I gain because now I have the product to be able to sell. Okay. And in fact, a lot of the trainings that I put out there are come out of similar types of scenarios just like that. Okay. Now, what could I have done? What if, what if that package, instead of being 12000 had been, uh, you know, I'll work with you for three months. I'll teach you everything you need to know about this. I'll help you get your life back in order. Let's say it's your case. You want to help somebody with diabetes or, you know, weight problems or lifestyle or whatever. They get on the phone with you. They say, you know, I'd love to do all this. I want to do this. And uh, you say, okay, well, it's going to be $2,000 to work with me for the next three months. We'll get on the phone once a week. And I will teach you something new every week. You don't need any prepared trainings to do that. You don't even have to record it, although I think it's silly not to, because if you record it, then you can send it to your client. They can listen to it later. Plus, as long as you get permission ahead of time, the same way that I did with that client, okay, you, you, you have a $2,000 package, you can say, hey, it'll be 1500 bucks if you let me record it and use it in the future. But, hey, you're creating your own home study course at the very same time. You're creating, do you see... Do you see the simplicity of the model that I've just given you? So yes, I do. I'm following you. Okay, excellent. So let me just kind of wrap this up. Okay, let me just kind of wrap this up. Before I wrap this up, I, I want to say, obviously, in my coaching program, I give you all the steps for creating your initial product, for creating your home study course, for creating your coaching program. But sometimes when I put it all in one package, just like I have just now, it makes it easier, okay? It makes it easier to, to be able to comprehend it, and you go get the details in the program. I, I want to give you the other model for selling coaching just right off the bat without selling an entry product, okay? Now, be, before I do this, let me give you the disclaimer, okay, the caveat. If people have bought at least one item and they get on the phone with you, they're going to convert at a much higher rate. Okay, what we typically see is conversion rates of between 30 and 40, maybe 50% to coaching if somebody has bought one item at 37, okay? If they've never bought anything, I don't care how much smoke other people blow about conversion rates without a product, they, they're lower, okay? I, I typically see 10% or so. Okay, can it be higher? Yeah. Can it be higher if you really screen people on the application? Yeah. Can it be higher, you know, if you tweak some things, if you have really cheap coaching? Yes. Okay, but, I mean, it, realistically, you have to weigh the difference. Do I want to talk to ten people and make one client sale, or do I want to talk to three and make one? Okay? And you have to make that decision. And, and, and frankly, when people are starting out, I say just talk to everybody. Because you don't have anything better to do. I mean, really, when you're starting out, how many sales are you going to make? Three sales a week at 37? Only one of those are going to get on the phone with you? Take you a whole month to get four people on the phone and make one coaching sale. But if you offered a free consult, health consultation to every single person that came onto your list, you might get 20 people a week to take you up on it. Sure, you're going to talk for 20 minutes, 20, 20 hours. But if 10% buy, you'll have eight clients a month. Okay, it's 20 a week, two people buy a, a week, that's eight people a month. So when you're first starting out, I just recommend talk to everybody. You should just recognize that most people aren't going to buy. But in the long run, if you take on eight new clients a month for three or four months, you get so busy with 25 clients that you no longer have time to talk to 20 people who haven't bought. And then you just switch over and you say, okay, I'm only talking to people that have bought at 37 bucks. I mean, it's really that easy. Hey, now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you the quick outline. I know this is a lot for your question, but once I got going on this, Cradine, I really feel like th this can help people. And so those of you who are on the call, I, really, I, I, I want to make it complete by giving you the next step. And I don't teach this next step a lot, but I, it, I just fresh on my mind because one hour before I did this training today, I just got on the phone with somebody and I used the exact formula I'm getting ready to give you and – Although the person did not sign up on the call, if I had to guess based on my experience, there's a 50% chance they'll sign up for coaching, meaning if I had two calls just like this, one of the two would, would likely sign up, okay? So what I do is I have a phone, 
I didn't try to sell him at all. I didn't do any kind of preamble, nothing. I, I didn't, nothing, nothing. I just said, hey, you know, I know you want to talk to me. What can I help you with? And I asked him, I said, what's going on? And, and he told me all the things that were going on. And I said, well, what's not working? And he told me what's not working. And I said, here, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell you how to fix this. And he told me like eight different things he needed help with. Okay. Now, in one hour, I can't help people with eight things. I mean, we've been talking now for, what, about 39 minutes, and I've helped you with one thing. Okay? I can't talk about eight things in an hour. And so I went into detail on the one problem that he mentioned, but there's still seven more. So when we got to about 45 minutes in the call, I finally finished with the next one, and I basically said, okay, well, you know, we've got 15 minutes left. Okay? And, and by the way, that's a critical part of the formula for that phone call. At, at about 45 minutes, you need to say, we've got about 15 minutes left. What do you want to work on before our free time is expired? Okay? I, I tell them that. This is free. They, they called me for free, and I tell them that. You know, I'll say, how much, you know, we've got about 15 minutes before your free consult is over. You know, and we, we, I've kind of given you what you needed there. I know there's a few other things. We don't have time to talk about everything. And obviously, if you choose to work with me, note those words, folks. If you choose to work with me, if you choose to work with me, I can really help you out on all eight of these things in the future. Okay, but anyway, and, and I just go right back. I say, what's the, what's, what do you want to use this last? And then I look at the clock, and I see there's only 13 left. And I say, okay, what do you want to use the last 13 minutes for? And you know what this person said? He said, I want you to do quickly, help me on point two, and then I want you to tell me about how I can work with you long run. Now, not everybody asks you that. But most people, is my experience, at least half, if you, if you seed the conversation at all with the idea that you help people long run, most people, if you do a good job of teaching on that free consult, most people will want to know how they can continue to work with you. You do that in health. You say, hello, you know, you know what, what, are you, what are you dealing with? They tell you the whole health story. Okay? And, and you say, well, what have you tried? And they, for, they go on and on for another 10 minutes. Remember, they're eating up their own clock. And you say, okay, well, what else have you tried? What didn't work? What do you want to do? Why did you call me? Why? Do, why? Why do you want to talk to me? Why do you think I can help you? Take notes when they tell you why, because that's why they're going to hire you. If, if they say to you, okay, well, the reason I, I'm calling you is because, you know, my doctor told me I'm 75 pounds overweight and I'm at an increased risk of a heart attack. And I look at my children, they're age 9, 11, and 7. And if I had a heart attack today and couldn't continue to raise them, I would be heartbroken. Let me ask you this. Why is this person going to join your coaching program? Why? It's not because it's 300 a month. It's not because you have discounted coaching at 20 bucks a month. It's not because you have 27 lessons a month. It's not because you're the best coach on earth. You know why they're going to join your coaching program? Because their doctor told them they're 75 pounds overweight, they're in a increased risk of heart attack, and they might die and they won't go watch their kids grow up. That's the reason they're going to join your coaching program, folks. And, and I'm talking, this is health here. This is a non-tangible. You know, and so often I get accused of, you know, well, you're always talking about money, so you're always telling people, to, to, you know, to invest money to make money. This isn't about money. This is about investing money to change your life. And if you're in health and wellness, that's, that should be your focus. Why are you helping people to change their life? You're changing their life. And then, so then they ask you about the coaching, okay? Now, I'm going to give you a technique I've never given before. Okay? And I have so many techniques I use, folks, that I just use the right one for the right moment. Okay? It, it, really, every time I do a call, I sit down with a script. And, and there's so many different ways then to call. There's so many ways to call somebody on coaching. And you don't even need to think about closing them on coaching. Here's what you do, folks. Well, here's one way. This is what I did this time. It's not the way you do it every time. Okay, in my training programs, see what I'm doing right here. I'm still doing it. This is part of my language. I'm always talking about what's in my programs. Because I'm always talking about that, when I get on the phone with a free consult, it just comes out. Okay? So my programs, if you're in my coaching program, you have the information. You know the canned words to use. But when I'm on a real call, am I using canned words? No. You may ask, well, why do you give us canned words? Well, because most of you want something to start with. 
And just because I give you something to start with doesn't mean that those are the exact words you have to use the rest of your life. Something to start with. You know, it's kind of like when you're, you know, you're teaching your three-year-old how to talk. You know, you, you don't give them big, you know, big college words. You know, you start with small ones. And, and, and then they build on that. And it's the same way here. But here's what I do with this client. He said, well, can you tell me all about your coaching programs? Because I'm talking to two. Listen to his words, folks. He said, because I'm talking to two other coaches, and I'm trying to decide between you and them who I'm going to go with. Come on, folks, what's he doing to me? He's baiting me. Now, he's going to do one of two things. He's either going to try to just get the cheapest coach. I don't want to be the cheapest coach, okay? And obviously, a lot of times people come to work with me because there are people that charge a lot more than me. But I don't want to be known as the cheapest coach. The cheapest coach usually is the one that doesn't have all the information, and they have to discount just to get clients. I don't want to compete on price at all. I don't want to compete at all. Hey, what else might he be trying to compete on? Oh, how many hours of lessons? And, you know, maybe he talked to some, some big braggadocio that said, you know what, if you sign up with me, I'm going to give you 1,000 hours of training, and nobody else on earth can give you that. I don't want to compete with 1,000 hours of training. You know why? He's never going to listen to more than 10 hours of that 1,000 anyway. I don't want to play that game either. I also don't want to. Because, see, I, I could spend 15 minutes finding out what I'm competing against. I don't want to compete at all. I'm, I'm not in the business of competing. I want people to work with me because they want to work with me. Do you know what I said to this client? It's not the same thing I do with everybody. But I said, well, let me ask you this. I mean, you've talked to some other coaches, and, I mean, you, you, you're trying to make a decision. What do you want in coaching? So he told me what he wanted. He said, I'd like to talk with you for an hour every single month. And I said, okay. And obviously, I asked him a few more questions. What, what do you want to do in that hour? You know, and, and then he gave me a break when, when he said he gave me a lucky break when he said to me, he said, of course, if you have a better way, let me know. Okay. And so I said, well, I think there is a better way. I said, because my experience with most people who do an hour a month, they generally don't get very much done. You know, because you spend, these are not my exact words, but the idea is, you know, you spend an hour working with a coach. You take lots of notes. For the next week, you work really, really hard. You do everything he told you to do, but then you've got to wait three weeks to talk to him again. I said, what I find works better is for people to talk with me for 10 or 15 minutes a week in a small group where if you have a bad week and you don't have anything to ask, you can sit and just learn from other people. But if you need the help, you're on the small group with five or six other people who are going to ask questions, okay, but you get 10 or 15, 20 minutes if that's what you need. I mean, my goodness – with you, Gray Bean, and I know I'm over-answering your question, but we've spent almost 50 minutes working on this now, okay, and hopefully you're going to be able to walk away. Hopefully everybody on this call is walking away with some ideas, okay, and that's what coaching is all about. That's what a small group coaching is all about, okay? But I said, you know, frankly, I, I, I think you're better off with these small bits, and I, and I said, here's why, and I told him why. I said, you're much better off. You talk with me for 10 minutes. I'll give you the instructions. You go do them if, you're, if you need more help the next week. Plus, I'm going to give you some training that's going to go along with it. Okay? And, and then his response was, well, yeah, that'd be great. I, I, I want to do what you think is best. Okay, now what would have happened if, if he insisted on the other? Well, I could have sold it to him at a price that would work for me, okay, because, I'm, because of the value of my time, it's very rare that I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. And if I do, I'm going to charge for it. I'm going to charge a lot for it. Why? Because I value my time, okay? Now, I, I had picked up on this conversation that this person doesn't have, like, a huge budget to work with. And so instead of just throwing a price out there, I said to him, I said, so let me ask you this. What's your budget for doing all of this? And he told me what his budget was. Okay? Now, see, the thing is, once somebody tells you your budget, then you can tailor the coaching program to match their budget. They meaning that if somebody comes to you and they have the budget that won't pay for an hour of one-on-one -on -one time, they won't even pay for 10 minutes worth a week of group time, and they tell you a number, then you can give them an offer of something else that would fit into their budget. Now, here's what you do. It's almost exactly the same thing I did with this person. I'm going to change it a little bit for you. Let's just say that you have a $500 a month coaching program that, you know, a small group, they meet you once a week, on and on and on, okay? 
and, and you say to this, they say that they want to be small group, whatever. They, you say to this person, you say, what, what's your budget? They say, well, my budget's 300 Here's what I say to those folks. I say, here's the thing. There's no way that I can give you that program for 300 bucks a month because it's not fair to everybody that's paying 500 But what I could do is create a customized program for you. Okay, you'll get half the instruction over time. Okay, so instead of getting four lessons a month, you'll get two. Okay, and instead of meeting me four times a month, then you can meet me twice a month. Okay, well, how does that sound? Okay, now, if they really want coaching, they're going to do one of two things. They're either going to find a way to pay a higher price, or they're going to work within their budget, and you're going to have a customized program for them. Okay, now, if they say to you, well, the only thing I can afford is 50 bucks a month, here's what I say to those people. I say, well, honestly, there's nothing I can do for you. My coaching starts at $500 a month. Okay, I have a little bit of wiggle room on that, but, you know, but 500 bucks a month. We're a long way off from 50 Here's what you really need. You really need my $200 home study course to start you out. It's not everything you need, okay, and I'm very clear on that. Okay, in fact, usually... I, you know, I, to, I told you, I, you know, when I'm talking to somebody, I'm not scripted. Usually I wouldn't even say, here's what you really need. I would say, here's what I suggest. Here's what I suggest. Start out with a $200 home study course. Get yourself making, in my case, it's money, but, you know, get yourself making a little bit more. And as soon as you have, you know, take my $200 course, get yourself making an extra grand a month, and then you'd be able to invest 500 bucks of that grand, right? They always say, yeah. Had an extra thousand coming in. Now, if you're in health, like you are, it might be a little bit different. You're going to say, well, here, here's the thing. I, I, there's no way I can work with you at $50 a month. There's no way. I mean, my program started at 500 bucks. Here's what I recommend. Work on your financial situation, okay, and, and maybe in the next couple of months you'll be able to change it, okay? Here's what I'm going to suggest. I'm going to suggest my $200 home study course, and I'll do it in four payments of $50. And then once you finish that course, you know, give me a ring and we'll see what we can do, okay? And, you know, maybe at that point the finances have changed. Maybe at that point they don't need as much help from you. They just need a little bit of email access or something. And, hey, maybe you're willing to do that for 50 a month. I don't know. I just wanted to, folks, I just wanted to kind of give you a complete picture of of, of how you can have a, a complete information business, including, folks, including a coaching program in the health and wellness arena without having any trainings in place already. It's just that easy.